Hey everybody, before we start this episode, there's something that I have to talk about first. You might have seen on the news we had a pretty bad accident at work this week. Our, our, uh, we tipped our crane over. And so, you know, first and foremost, thank God nobody was injured. We're really grateful for that. You know, property, machinery, all that stuff can be replaced, but you know, people can't. So we're really grateful for that. I'm not gonna talk too much about it, at least at this time. I personally was not on the job when this happened. I was actually filming this video that you're about to watch when the accident happened and I didn't find out until later that day. So there's an ongoing investigation to figure out exactly what happened and what could have been done to prevent the crane from tipping over. So we're, we're you know, trying to get to the bottom of that. Eastside Shearworks has always prioritized safety and training above everything else and so we're working to find ways to implement, you know, better safety protocols going forward so, you know, nothing like this ever happens again. I got like hundreds of messages from people all over the world with their well wishes and their prayers and so I just want to say, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I want to thank the, the customers too, the homeowners, they've been really gracious throughout this period and, you know, I, just thank you and maybe keep your thoughts and prayers with the guys that were on the crew that day because, um, you know, those probably pretty traumatic. So I just want to once again say thank you and I hope you enjoy this video. Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode, a little bit different today for you. We are here at the farm and we are going to be talking about our mill that we just got. We got this thing about a month ago and so we're going to mill up some boards and talk about you know where our trees go when we're done with them, sort of our vision moving forward, what we want to do with our wood. And we are out here with Beth. Beth runs the mill. She's the brains behind this operation. We just got it. So yeah, Beth, what are we doing today? So um, today we're gonna uh, mill some dug fir. We had been stockpiling these large, gorgeous logs in hopes that we would get a mill someday. And we hate having to bring them to for firewood when they're beautiful logs or sell them off to other mills or turn them into chips if they're not great logs. So we're trying to use the tree in the best way for that tree. Um, and so the mill is just our next step in that. Oh, cool. Yeah. How long, how long have we had it? About a month and a half. Oh, okay. So About. And yeah. you feel like you're getting the hang of it pretty good? So I will say that it's really early and that I think it'll take years to become yeah. an expert, but um, it definitely is starting to feel more familiar. I'm starting to see when there's going to be a problem. Um, I can see better um what we're going to be able to get out of a log that kind of stuff so making progress but still make a ton of mistakes <laughs> yeah totally that's like anything you start you know like, yeah this is a big learning curve it'll be cool maybe we can do another video like in a year or something right? see like how things are coming along and yeah that would be sort great of see the operation so yeah. right now it's sort of preliminary you know but yeah. uh yeah why don't you fire this bad boy up and let's awesome let's mill some wood awesome let's do it So I'm loading the log now. I'm turning the log so that I can get the knots kind of on the corners so we're cutting as much of those knots off as possible. Before my first cut and before my second cut, what I'm measuring there is trying to get the pith in the center of my cant as much as possible because that center is actually weaker wood than the outside and so a center cut is pretty much throwaway. you just can't use it for structural stuff your first two cuts that's where you're trying to create the first shape of your cant the cant is the rectangular piece of lumber that you're going to make all of your other cuts out of your first two cuts are trying to shape the first part of your cant. So you cut as much off of those as possible. It takes me usually a couple of cuts to get down to that because 
when I'm milling by myself, I want to be able to take those pieces off by myself without having to go get another piece of equipment or another person to help me. And once you have those first two cut, then you start thinking about what lumber you're going to cut out of that. And sometimes that's just in accordance with the job that you're wanting to do, what you're wanting to build out of it. I had been talking to my brother, Matt, about Eastside and he had been talking about this piece of property and needing to develop it. And also for years, he'd been talking about milling. And I said, you know, like, what if I quit and just come and I mill and develop your property for you? Okay, so I so we just trimmed off all the knots in the bark, right? That's what we just right. did, just so that we could get it square. Yeah, we, yeah, we got we we trimmed off all the rounds so that now we have our cant, um, and your cant is basically what you mill your boards out of. Um, and I think that uh, so today we're um, milling to replace our deck here at the farm, and also to make a housing for our mill. And so I think that these ones, uh, this is going to be two by sixes. Um, I think I can get some good two by sixes for the uh, roof for the uh, mill house. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you're, you're making a house for the mill. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. So it can stay nice and dry and the operator can stay nice and dry and the yeah. machine doesn't rust out. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, cool. Yeah. So, um, so this one, so this cant, we will do this dimension. Um, so the cant is like the square part that you yeah. can start making usable lumber out of. Right. The cant, okay. Right, and, and this, this uh, cant has quite a bit of bark uh, wain on it, um, but uh, it was because this log has a lot of taper. And so I didn't want to get rid of all the nice usable lumber on this side. Um, just because that side's thinner um, and we have enough length here that we can still get some really good boards even though there's Wayne on, on that side. So we can just cut that off. Wayne is the, are the parts that are receded? Like with the yeah, bark Yeah, it's on with them? the bark on it. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, for the grading process, um, each board can have a, a certain amount of Wayne on it. Um, but for our purposes here, um, we'll whoever's building it will be selective on on what they are using it for to make right. sure we have enough structure there okay cool and um and how and how big does this mill go um so this mill um it's it's a good question there's a little bit of a fudge oh i gotta turn my water off leaking water all over my mill. So sprays water as you go to like lubricant. yeah so it. that's the lubricant um what the lubricant is water and then a little bit at dawn. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, keeps the pitch off of that um, blade. Uh, keeps the blade nice and clean. That's what they clean the penguins with. Yeah, <laughs> true. They had that big oil The spill. penguins and the Ever ducks. since I saw that, I was like, all right, I'm yep. sold on the dawn. Dawn's the so. thing, right? <laughs> yeah, if we can get oil off, I guess it could probably get our pitch off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the distance between these two guide rollers, so this one's the movable guide roller, and that's the stationary guide roller. And the distance between those um, at its widest point is about 38 inches. And so that's as wide as you can go that way. But, um, and that's part of why we selected this mill is that uh, it has such a large uh, uh, throat on it. Um, and what you can do is you can bring it all the way up. And once it's all the way up, uh, you can get about 38 inches there, or 37 inches, but then you also have this space above that can be additional, right? So if our log was not perfectly round, if it was a little bit oblong, we could go bigger than 38 inches and then be able to cut, that would be part of the round part that we cut off, right? Okay. But some of ours are so big that we have to also use a chainsaw to yeah. get them, <laughs> get them yeah, started, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But it's sort of like 38 at the narrowest point. 38 right. inches okay. right and and you kind of that's, that's a big that's a big log 38 it's inches. huge yeah. yeah yeah it's huge it's huge yeah we've had um i think the biggest one i've had on here so far is uh it was 36 and then it had a couple of parts that that had uh bulged out yeah um so we were really pushing it yeah um and it was fun but the the mill it's it's a beast it handled it you know rolled that log just fine and and handled it um handled it great it was 16 foot by oh wow know, 
It was a big, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a big, big log. Piece of wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cool how it just like tumbles it around like that. Right. Yeah, it's got a lot of power. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, well, cool. All right. Well, I guess let's uh, let's see these boards. All right. Eastside takes it down a lot of very large trees, and those are the ones we like keeping. So we got 24 boards, but probably 18 of them are fully usable, and the other ones, we'll have to cut some of the kerf off of those. Yeah, wow, so that is, yeah, that's a nice piece of wood, Beth. Yeah, so this is a stack of two by sixes, and um, we were able to get, what, I didn't even count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight times three, 24, two by sixes. Um, and some of them will uh, have some weight on them that we'll have to cut off. Um, but you can see this was a this was a fairly naughty log for what we normally yeah. mill. Um, but that's, you know, urban lumber, the trees when they're growing have more branches lower um and it, and it's open so they they can grow more branches so sometimes that's what we get but um a lot of it is still really usable um and we're happy to be able to to reuse it in that way yeah yeah how cool yeah thanks for thanks for showing us that yeah it's fun that's awesome yeah we should go check out the uh the log deck yeah so we've cleared out a space down here just cleared out brush not not trees and Ian's been moving the logs down here over the last couple of weeks from our old location okay man that is a lot of logs <laughs> that's crazy yeah so that's Ian that's Beth's husband up there and he's been because we recently bought this property so he's moving all the logs from our old shop to the new shop and they're kind of staging them and prepping them to get milled and everything. So that's Ian up there, he drives our log truck. We should actually ask him what he's doing. So this is all wood that we brought from the office. Pretty much it's all cedar and fir and millable sized lumber. You know, stuff we can actually get some substantial stuff out of. Yeah, some of this is just the color in some of this is just so pretty. It really like it's is. It's just it's pinks and when it's, it's, yeah, it's just gorgeous. It really is. So Eastside is really aiming to use all of the tree. We use the chips for our chip roads here and we deliver using chip drop and we use the logs for lumber and we even are using the sawdust for animal bedding in some cases when we can. So every part of the tree gets used for something, be it roads, landscaping, animal bedding, or lumber. So this right here is just kind of a pus pile of things that need to get sorted out. I've got some fur in there, some firewood. There's a couple pieces down here that Beth is gonna mill up. So just kind of a random, didn't really have a spot for it yet, but now I do. If you look over here, We've got a stack of butt cuts that are too big to go on the mill, but we'll go on the Alaska mill and, and we'll uh, live slab those out and should make some really nice slabs. Hopefully there's a uh, little bit of cedar, a little bit of fir, and, and we've got a real nice piece of oak in there that everybody's looking forward to seeing. We've got a couple piles of relatively exotic wood over here with this one is a redwood that uh, we're going to do some live slab out of and we've got some madrona there in the back and on the other side of that we've got some english walnut that should be pretty fun to to slab up and if you caught last week's video this is the log that we were filming on Hopefully we get to mill this up soon and, and we'll uh, make another video out of that. Ian is in construction. He's a structural welder. Someday we're going to move out to Montana and have our own big piece of property and mill. And we had been talking about how to transition from where we are 
to that and one step is coming here and learning a lot about it and learning about milling yeah. and raising and, our own animals and raising our own animals learning how to raise yeah. our own meat and our own food which we're doing all of that here as well I have been in IT for 26 years. Um, I was a software developer manager, um, mostly developing software for law enforcement and the Department of Defense. Um, and I, after 26 years, I was having a ton of fun and I always had a ton of fun doing that. But um, all of my hobbies have been outdoors. Um, I have volunteered on farms a lot. I do dog agility and, and herding with my dogs. Come by, lie down. That'll do, that'll do. And I just love being outdoors. Okay. Thanks for showing us all that, Beth. Um, so what what's the plan with all this wood? So I imagine you're gonna, this yeah. is a permanent, right? This is not. So this this wood in particular, we are milling for our own deck on, on the farmhouse here. But um, our hope for the future is that when we go to places and people are really attached to their trees, right? We live in the Northwest, people love trees, they love their trees, they live, they've lived with them for years. Um, and it's sometimes when we take down trees, it's because the tree's dangerous, um, it's gonna fall on their house, it's gonna damage something. Um, and people really would have rather hang on to that tree, right? Um, so we want to actually make it so that we can give them something back so we could they can make a table out of it they can make um, a gazebo out of it um, a privacy screen since we just took down their tree that was their privacy screen out of it something to that effect where they still can have that tree um, and then it's a, a piece that they can show their friends like oh yeah this was a tree that you know used to live here um, so we're hoping that we can we can do that kind of thing with with milling our lumber here yeah, I think that's an awesome idea. A lot of times, like, the trees are dead, but the wood is still really nice on the inside, right. you know, to make, like, a table. Like, how cool would that be? You know, and then, like, somebody comes over to your house for dinner, and it's like, yeah, this, this table used to be our tree. Right. Yeah, right. that would be really right. cool. Yeah, and, I, I mean, the lumber that we're getting um, is really beautiful as well. Um, it's nice that it's grown locally, um, you know, never leaves King County, right? Grew in King County. Uh, comes here to be milled in King County and then we'll build something in King County. You know, it's, it's fun that everything's just so local as yeah. well. Um, and I think that's pretty rare uh, to be able to use locally so sourced lumber. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's super cool. Well, we'll have to do another video once we've get, once the mill's got a house and we've got yeah. more of a system down and stuff and we'll have to do like an update or something. Yeah, when we have a lumber yard. <laughs> yeah yeah right no this is cool yeah um i'm really yeah thanks you and ian for doing this yeah I think it'll be yeah cool to thanks show for everybody. coming out because i get questions all the time you know people ask me all the time like where are you guys doing yeah yeah where's it where's it going what yeah. are you doing with your wood so you can see we're we're starting to starting to put something together you know trying to build up and use these boards or yeah something yeah yeah yep. yeah thanks beth thank you <laughs> all right hopefully you like that don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you next time Hey fellas, if you enjoyed that video, please like and subscribe. And if you like shorter videos, be sure to check out my second channel, Trees and Chips, where I'm posting highlights, clips, and scenes from the longer episodes on this channel. You can follow Eastside Tree Works on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow me, Guilty of Treason, on Instagram and TikTok. And if you want to come work with us here at Eastside Tree Works, be sure to click the link in the description below, fill out an application. We'd love to have you on board. And once again, thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, you're a good boy. He's really quirky. He's very funny. Hey, geez. <laughs> He's in your face. <laughs> right there. Oh, good right boy. there. Good boy.